topic of this discussion would be bridging the digital divide through best in class education so we all discuss we all know about the role of technology and how technology can impact the teaching learning and evaluation ecosystem but when i talk of technology that two things emerge one access to the technology and of course the application of that technology we are fortunate i am talking of the type of people coming from the middle class or upper middle class who have got access to the gadgets who have got access to the technology and because they have got access to the technology they also get access to the new form of education but at the same time we have got vast rural hinterlands which do not have that quality access to the technology that the hinterlands do not have that level of infrastructure also we have got issues of connectivity as well so how do we bridge this divide actually today there are two concepts there is one india and there is one bharat to so bharat aur india ke beech mein how do we bridge this gap so this we will be discussing in this uh, panel discussion today bridging the digital divide through western class education so what we will do we will be having a just 2 minutes uh, opening note from all the speakers here in this panel thereafter we will go get into a q and a q and a mode question answer mode so starting from swati would you like to come in again uh, good afternoon everyone uh, i hope we keep the session very interactive for you and you don't feel sleepy uh, coming back to the point of digital divide of course there is a digital divide which we all know uh maybe it's because of the demographics maybe it's because of the resources any of the students have got but we all know that there are tools available there is technology which has come up which can bridge this gap and uh in the initial conversation in uh, in the morning conversation all everybody talked about how technology is there and everybody is trying to get that to make sure that whatever the problems that we are facing and specifically in education which is the which is basically the backbone of any country's economy so there are a lot of technology investments going by the companies like microsoft who is trying to bridge this gap by the tools or by providing solutions which you will be hearing uh, in the due course also and we want to make sure that everybody gets equal education because that's a mission that we go by Thank you, Swati. My name is Puthal. Opening comments. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at first, I like to thank Elets and Microsoft to organize this wonderful event to educate us related to the technological advancement across the country and what technology we are using to transform the education, to transform the life of the common masses. those are at the bottom of the pyramid at odisha knowledge corporations we are uh, basically working in three uh, emerging areas of e learning e as a e learning e empowerment e governance then when we are talking about e learning the technology is the only tool to take education into the grassroots level to take education into the bottom of the pyramid when we are talking about education at the bottom of the pyramid technology is the transmitting medium then when we are going to the masses at odisha knowledge corporations we are believing that to bridge the digital divide it is very much important to spread digital literacy then if the digital literacy will be available each each and every persons in our society then the adoption of tech there will be an possibility of adoption of technology with each and every person so to bridge that digital divide across the state we are partnering with around 600 plus partners we are managing around 7000 plus cloud computers and we are trying to create a connect technology with people technology with masses through that medium we are also encouraging the educators we are also encouraging the teachers the faculties by providing them educate uh, educate uh, educations in uh, that area of technology then when we are talking about train the trainer 
and when we are talking about bridging the digital divide there the use of technology is helping us in many way for example we are using microsoft teams we are using microsoft 365 and in each year around 40 to 50000 students are coming to our uh, centers and we are there in more than 4000 to 5000 schools across the state where we are providing e content to the students to learn we are adopting technologies like uh, mix reality augmented reality virtual reality gamifications into content what are used consumed by the students across the state we are touching the lives of the students we are touching the life of the teachers in a very large scale recently to bridge the gap of education that what we lost during the uh, our uh, covid period two years learning gap we bridge that gap within a very short period of 100 days we uh, touched around 40 lakh students across the state because of the technology we trained around 2.5 lakh sub teachers because of the use of technology therefore technology is very much important and there is definitely a gap that is there is definitely definitely a divide to bridge the divide we need to empower the common masses we must bridge the digital divide and we must empower the educators in the right perspective to create a wonderful society for our, ourselves and also to adopt technology in our day to day life thank you dr jena good afternoon everybody thanks to elets for inviting chsc odisha to present some ideas regarding the technology adopted in uh, in an examining body uh, so uh, i am Uh, from CHS Odisha Council of Higher Secondary Education Odisha, we are conducting examinations in higher secondary level uh, in uh, class 12. Uh, we are having three lakh sixty thousand student base, and we are conducting examinations all over the state. Uh, and uh, the uh, in terms of technology, we are adopting uh, the online evaluation process. Uh, particularly for science and uh, commerce stream students around uh, uh, around 120000 students their their answer scripts are being evaluated through online mode and uh, uh, in the future times in, in the future period we are uh, having a plan to go for online evaluation for all the streams for to total uh the students but uh, the constant is uh, the teachers are not uh, well educated well uh, versed with the technology they they are also uh, the, the the network system in different rural areas is also not supporting so that is why we are not adopting the total uh, evaluation process and the tabulation process on online mode uh but since 2015 the with the help of the technology uh we are becoming very successful in order to uh, uh evaluate the answer scripts and uh, maintaining the uh, transparency in the publication of results so we are hopeful that uh, with the help of uh other uh, technology players Uh, it will be the chsc uh, will be in future times will be uh, very much uh, it will be helpful for chsc to conduct all the examinations although it is it is being conducted in offline mode but the evaluation process tabulation process and result publications all these things will be done through uh, adoption of this new technology thank you thank you very much Uh, we move on the discussion to uh, mr raghuram ayer now your opening comments sir good afternoon first of all i would like to congratulate elets and microsoft for hosting this type of a summit and uh, educating us on the technological possibilities 
As far as Odisha is concerned, in the education field, in the last few years, it has been a very happening scene. And I would say that uh, COVID-19 has been a blessing in disguise. Maybe due to the COVID, a lot of our teachers and students have become technology savvy or at least comfortable with using technology. So though the divide is there, the last few years, the divide has slightly bridged, but still there is a long way to go. And I hope that with these type of initiatives, we can, we can address the gaps and try to use technology as far as possible. Thank you. I left Gangadhar Sahu in, in the middle. Gangadhar Sahu, if you can just throw your opening comments on this topic. Good afternoon, everybody. We should all thank Elets, Microsoft, and Sugarbox for holding this type of education summit. This is really a platform for knowing each other, for learning from each other. This is an opportunity for all of us also to assess ourselves. I mean, we watched what was shown to us by Swati Koshal. Again, those who would be available till the end of the program, they will be seeing what is to be shown by Sugarbox, that is another technology provider. But the topic is so interesting, so vast, so gigantic, and so engaging for all of us. Unless you give your full time and attention and ponder over the issue, you cannot know the gravity of the problem. We will be discussing about the digital divide and how to address this issue. That means that they are asking us to source, I mean to tell what have we done in Odisha to bridge the digital divide in education. I was thinking, is there any divide or not? Have we actually bridged the divide or not? Can we bridge the divide or not? Then I looked at the beautiful audience here. Here, Raghuram, me, we are bureaucrats. Fortunately or unfortunately, I passed one third of my career in education, around 14 years. He is there also for more than five years. And when I look at the audience, I can also find there is a divide. We are not equally technologically competent. But what they are discussing is not that we should be equally digitally competent. I hope so. What they are saying whether the access is there or not. It's nowhere in the world also, I can say. But what is required then? We must strive towards that, to give access to everybody. But when there is income gap, when there is generation gap, What can you do when there is a geography gap? Can you think uh, uh, Kendrapada and Korapta are same? No. So the divide is there. But at government level, how many steps are you taking to bridge that divide? That is the issue.
tell me in the society all are physically able no there are physically disabled we call them differently able somebody is physically challenged somebody is mentally challenged so in one of the meeting people were discussing about the digitally challenged person that means those who are not able to handle the computer or the technology they are digitally challenged and for every challenged person there is uh, some kind of relief so we must also provide some kind of relief to the digitally challenged persons i'll tell you in the education department as as far as my knowledge goes we have done so many things there was call scheme then right now you have transformation of high schools under the 5t program and in every department every directorate you have some uh, technology driven programs going on right now i am placed in the technical education department that is skill development and technical education here i see everything i mean from morning to evening we talk of technology technology and technology either it is in iti or it is uh, polytechnic or it is engineering colleges or uh, it is universities still then i find this uh, digital divide there also but again when i look at their logo i see you uh, see to make the bharat future ready and to make the odisha future ready we cannot remain contented so i am happy that partners like microsoft sugarbox they are here to empower us you know there is rti a right to information act everybody has a right to information so what is the right for the next generation it is right to wifi now without wifi the next generation cannot live that is the oxygen for the next gen so whenever we are discussing here let us remember it is our duty bharat duty in duty of an indian to get educated to get digitally competent and to make digitally competent who are around us so whether i am in this department or that department i always look at those people who are providing technological solution so i am really indebted to those who have come here to educate us to empower us and i look forward to shaking hands with them thank you very much great gangadhar sau you mentioned about digitally challenged persons so the question is ki how do we address the situation but before we get into the q and mode i would request mr arki dash from nic for his opening comments on this topic bridging the digital divide good afternoon everybody esteemed panelist and participants and i see being the premier it organization established in 1985 in odisha since the day of its inception we are trying to provide ict solutions to whole education ecosystem since the topic is how we are bridging digital divide the way back when we started our district centers in 1988 strangely 
large population of the government officials the first time touched the computer or seen a computer if i am not wrong from that day the thought of our organization is to first educate make computer literate to the government officials all the government staff that was one of our agenda when we started with then we gradually shifted for developing applications and promoting ict culture in government sectors internet came later on when we were there we were using actually b sats for our own communication system with that we created email facilities through centralized server this type of own email devices were not available we were using dax systems over the vsats we were providing email account to all the officials where uh, the emails are being used using those systems we started big programs like counting election counting and all these things but we started in 2000 to digital divide bridging program in southern part of odisha we started a program called as e gram where the digital contents collected in the district level were taken offline and provided to the e gram centers in collaboration with the nehru yuva kendra sangathan which is a premier organization for the youth the contents were um, access offline and provided to the citizens who have required this information also some uh, low cost computer literacy programs were being conducted through that so that that will create computer literates in the, in the panchayat level and the certification process was done by the new rubric in the nyk nyk organization so this way we found that in 2000 itself many people could get the computer literacy even the and get a job like small data entry operators from the village level itself talking about this as the topic is that uh, there is a uh, challenge for providing computer uh, literacy programs or computer use of computer or applications to the uh, physically challenges challenge people at the mandate of the government of india all our our website hosted in nic and in okak also we are following gigw compliant features which are mostly accessible for all the physically disabled or physically challenged people and presently we have an application called as e sugamya web where it helps other applications to get compliance and audit report is also generated through those applications to get ready to make wga compliant websites for others being the technical uh, technology partner of the government we look forward to the departments to cooperate with us to come up with various solutions so we have center of excellence for blockchain we have center of excellence for ai we have center of excellence for gis for all the technology we have our own center of excellence at any time different departments are seeking our help we provide the required technology which is suitable to be implemented which can reach uh, the people at the grassroots level we have provided this for an example we provide a small solution for utkal university where virtual tutorial projects where the contents for undergraduate students of 15 departments are being created in regional and uh, english language the difference is that here we have used our nic's own video on demand server the difference that generally all the contents are available in youtube educational learning contents where well, the problems of youtube they can remove the content anytime and it, the, the bandwidth should be more but in this case 
and there are a lot of people who have been doing things. In this video on demand server, our network takes care of the uh, available network and reduces the size of the content, video content, so that it it is equally accessible at the rural areas where the bandwidth is less, and it is bridging the divide between the haves and have-nots. We are with having solutions. Once any department is coming up with us, we are ready to provide better solution for bridging digital divide. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Das. As technical partners of government departments, the role of NSC cannot be overstated. Uh, let me bring in here Mr. Tapas Nayak for his uh, opening comments on this topic. So thanks, uh, Microsoft, for arranging such type of state level summit at Bhubaneswar for us first time in Odisha uh, and uh, the title basically is Future Ready Bharat uh, perhaps this is in the light of the national education policy where the vision of the national education policy is to create a new Bharat along with the 21st century skills among the children and while we are talking about the 21st century skills definitely each and every learner of our country needs to be uh, digital literate, not only literate. So digitally, they must be sound to use the technology in the teaching learning processes for their own learning. So basically, uh, when I talk about the digital uh, and the role of technology in the education system, uh, particularly I am working in the field of teacher education since last 25 years in Odisha, uh, in different teacher education institutions. Uh, basically, uh, to employ the technology uh, for the optimum use of the both the teacher, students and also the system. This is our motto. And if there is a gap, we have to go to the last person, the last child, the last teacher who is working in a remote place, the child who is working in a very hill, uh, in a hill area uh, without any basic uh, um, benefits in infrastructures. So the technology has to work there to develop the situation and to bridge the digital gaps there. So digital gaps means the technological gaps, uh, particularly in access and use um, of all the stakeholders. All the stakeholders means the system people, people working in the system level, the, the teachers and the students. Uh, so um, because if there will be a digital divide, the digital hub and the digital hub nuts. So what will be the problem? Because why such type of digital divide is there? Because due to the advancement of technology in every day, in day to day lives, so the gap is gradually widening. No internet connectivity, no access, and even if there is access, the people who are working, how they are using the technology in the, um, uh, in the classroom situations, in the teaching learning process, that has to be thought of. Basically, when there is a digital divide, the problem is that there is uh, the uh, there is exclusion. Some people are excluded from the mainstream. There is some people are ex uh, uh, like what uh, Gangadhar sir told. There is exclusion, uh, particularly of the disabled children, the Dibyang children. So, in the digital uh, area, there is exclusion. Some children they are excluded from the mainstream. They are uh, uh, in terms of access and also use. And second thing is the uh, those people they gradually they go to isolation. Those children, those teachers, when they see other te other teachers are using technology in their classes, other children are using the technology for their learning. And if they are not able to do that, they are not getting the access. They are not. Uh, they have no capacity to use that. So gradually those people will be sidelined, and there is a problem of equality uh, equity in our education system. Just I am remembering the power of technology and how that can be uh, used in the field of education. So during the COVID period, um, um, when I was at SCIT and Gangadhar sir was our director, um, basically the, um, the diets and the elementary teacher training institutes are uh, within the control of the director of SCIT. And uh, when the institutions are closed, schools are closed, everything was closed. So uh, we thought that uh, if a person who will come pass out from a teacher training institute and he will go to work as a teacher in a primary school or a secondary school without any skills, without any exposure to direct teaching to the children, only passing the theory papers, uh, what type of teacher he will be? 
So actually, thanks. I will. I am very much uh, the, the thankful to Gangadhar sir. His vision. At uh, he started that at the time alternate internship program because in our B.Ed course and the diploma course we have internship program where the student teachers, uh, the prospective teachers, they go to the schools and give the teaching there. But when the schools are closed, how the teaching will be possible? And what type of the skill the uh, the teachers will develop? So uh, nearly we have we have twelve thousand student teachers at that time in Odisha in the D.Ed course. and we reached nearly 9000 plus student teachers who were at their village level at their at their uh, at their own villages and they started the teaching uh, there uh, uh, they collected the uh, gather some students uh, in their own village and started the practice teaching there and send the reports videos and so, so that the diet at the diet level the diet faculties they observed the videos they gave the guidelines they guided them they helped them in planning of the lessons so this is the power power of the technology but still uh, uh, when we are talking about the 9000 student teachers uh, still some student teachers those who have access to technology they perform better and develop their skills those the, uh, those student teachers those who have no access to internet and there are remote areas uh, where there, there, there is problem so uh, still that is a doubt that uh, uh, to what extent their skills have been developed so it is the right time to bridge the gap to um, uh, bridge the isolation to bridge the exclusion to minimize the exclusion and to reach to every child of the state also uh, every child of the country thank you thank you sir bhaji as rightly mentioned by you the endeavor of the department has to be to take the fruits of education to every child every student swati in her presentation was mentioning about the concept of uh, inclusivity and accessibility so on this point my first question to raghuram ayer would be how is the department of education in odisha adopting new technologies and innovations to make education more efficient and accessible in the state particularly what role do you see emerging technologies such as ai and virtual reality playing in education program ayer see in the last uh, few years there is a program called the 5t transformation of schools so we have around 8000 government and government aided high schools in the state out of the total 10000 odd high schools and uh, till today around 60 to 70% of the high schools have been transformed by transformed means they have smart classes they have an e library and they have upgraded science laboratories these are the three non negotiable components under the 5t transformation other than that there is a beautification of the school that is accessible toilets drinking water clean drinking water facilities so these are the other basic minimum facilities that should be available to students but coming back to the digital part or the technological part that is the smart classes and the e library so smart classes in the high schools we have pre preloaded e content also available as i told you during the covid times a lot of e content has been developed and it has come into the department servers so teachers have access to a lot of e content and they can delve into any topic when whichever they want so that is one thing which uh, is available right now and e content has made an audio audio visual uh, ex- given an audio visual experience to students so it has made it is making learning fun for the st- students so not only for the high school students but also for the middle school students teaching teaching and learning is be- i mean learning from their side is becoming fun and teaching for the teachers is also a new experience so one part is the smart classes which is really helping the students in fact in many places especially in rural odisha now the government schools are uh, a competition for the private schools also then coming to the 
e library each school each high school has around 10 to 20 computers with one or two servers with e content available so students have access to a huge amount of information books reference materials and internet facility is given to the e library so students are having access to this especially the high school students and now since the Matriculation or the 9th, 10th course also involves a lot of project work and internal assessments. So other than the textbooks, students have to refer other materials also. They have to know something beyond their textbooks. So that is also a good learning experience for them. So e-library, e by setting up e-library, uh, it is also helping a lot in the edu uh, education sector. So basically I would like to say that an ecosystem has been created in the high schools. And similarly now government is also thinking of upgrading the digital ecosystem of higher secondary schools. Because this is the level above 6th, 7th grades where the students need a digital knowledge or a digit digital education. So while the ecosystem has been created, yes, we do have some problems like the net connectivity in some districts, lack of accessibility in some districts or some areas, not districts, but some areas within a district. So those will have to be addressed in due course of time, but definitely, an ecosystem has been created in the last few years for developing education, for using technology to help us in a good, creating a good educational system. Great, sir. You mentioned about e-content development, smart classes, e-library, and of course, uh, basic facilities like uh, amenities and, and cleanliness in the schools. Taking forward the discussions now, I... Within, uh, I think within the next few months, by the end of this year, all the high schools in Odessa will be uh, covered. They will become transformed schools. Then that would be a big achievement as far as uh, bringing in inclusivity in the education is concerned. Let me go to Dr. Sunil Kumar Jaina, uh, who is the Vice Chairman of Council of Higher and Secondary Education. Jaina Saab, what steps are being taken to ensure that students from remote or disadvantaged areas have access to necessary digital resources for their education. And how is the curriculum in Odisha being adapted or modified to address the, these challenges posed by the digital divide? Actually, uh, uh, this year we have started an initiative to develop the uh, e-content. Uh, and uh, uh, now the students are reading and uh, the, the books are available and the students are reading the books as well as the but, uh, entire uh, textbooks of uh, the Council of Higher Secondary Education is available in the website and, and students are accessing all, all the uh, books uh, in the uh, internet as well as they, this, this year we have started uh, the program for development of e-content. All the uh, t uh, total, total syllabus will be covered and uh, Perhaps it will take one year to complete the total e-contents. Fair enough. Uh, Dr. Bhavendra Putal, tell us something about the key initiatives of OKCL in spearheading the education in the state. At uh, Odisha Knowledge Corporations, uh, as I already said, that we are basically into digital, uh, to bridging the digital divide that one area we are addressing for the youths and another area is for the school children. Then when I am talking about the youths, then uh, we launched a digital literacy moment. Then we created digital contents for uh, different kind of uh, programs through which we are trying to bridge the digital, uh, digital divide and also uh, providing educations to the youths to create the possibility of employment and employability. Then to achieve this uh, success, we created our 
learning centers that is authorized learning centers across the state and through the learning centers we are uh, providing educations we are uh, providing different type of contents uh, to the youths to make them job ready then uh, during my travel to the districts once i asked a youth that what you are doing then uh, very uh, interestingly that youth told me that i am a youtuber then uh, what exactly how much you are earning in a month he said that, sir uh, not less than 10 to 15000 so exactly we are also trying to educate youths in that area of capitalizing the digital economy capitalizing the gig economy and to be a freelancers and we started an experiment in the state of odisha since last 3 to 4 years we educated around 7 to 8000 youths across the state particularly remote districts when we are talking about digital divided remote districts in odisha only 6000 villages are not having internet apart from that all the villages are having internet also good quality internet then when we started this journey in that uh, second october 2018 and till that there are around 8000 youths who transform themselves as gig workers doing wonderful freelancing jobs and earning on and average 8500 rupees per month this is a great achievement uh, from the uh, from our uh, initiative what we have taken then when we are uh, we are talking about the school children we have a great experience of educating school children using technology from the year 2014 first time government of orissa through uh, school and mass education department entrusted us to create 4000 wonderful uh, computer labs provide e content to the students and teachers training for delivering the computer aided learning programs to themselves the through that experience what uh, what we found around 25 lakh students 40000 teachers uh, take that advantage of technology to create wonderful teaching and learning outcomes and based upon those experiences now we are having our own mobile learning facilities means now e contents are there inside the schools teachers are using the e content students are uh, uh, learning with phone but what about the students when they are going to the home and as as per the statistics that each day a students is spending 6 to 7 hours with a digital device then if we will see during my childhood my mother giving my food uh, looking at the moon and uh, uh, you are encouraging me to have food but now mother sir uh, encouraging the students by showing youtube videos means the engagement of this kid from the childhood with the technology is very much therefore now it is very much essential to bring contents inside the houses therefore we launched our mobile learning program so through that mobile all these contents are available the students can create cre- uh, access those contents even curate the contents access is one part but is already available with us already available with the state government already av- available with different departments but what about the curation there are ocean of contents available across the globe so therefore we created very wonderful deep curations methodology in the le- uh, in the name of learning assistant then using the deep curations methodology one can access huge amount of relevant contents he may be a teachers he may be a students during my interactions with uh, teachers in different schools as of now we are also very closely working and monitoring the few thousand schools inside the states uh, with the help of uh, school and mass education department the teachers are using the deep curations technologies and and creating an engagement mode inside the schools in uh, along with the students and also it's helping the students to do different kind of some little research there during preparations of their project reports during learning new technologies during learning new concepts etc therefore 
we are working for the youths in a different way we are working for the uh, students in a different way also we are working for the last mile people when we are talking about the last mile people he may be a farmer he may be a self help group uh, self help group persons for them also we created very interesting contents that may be related to leadership that may be related to financial literacy digital literacy again we are engaging them to come out of that fear of digital divide to bridge that digital divide and we are encouraging them to use technology to create a wonderful knowledge based society to create a very wonderful knowledge based economy therefore this is not the end this is the beginning then we are trying to push everything to the last mile people we are treating that last mile people as the first then when that last mile the bottom of the pyramid would be empowered then only the vision of uh, our government the vision of uh, that uh, transformations will be successful in the state of odisha thank you well said uh, dr manjuranjan that the last mile to become the first mile now and then only we will be able to realize the vision of transformation of the entire governance and education ecosystem let me bring in here our uh, industry expert swati koshal from microsoft swati how do you see uh, microsoft playing a role in empowering the educators in the state and bridging this digital divide we are discussing about uh before i do that uh, i really want to congratulate like the team here and all the dignitaries for the great work that they are doing and actually understanding that there is a digital divide and taking initiatives to make sure that there is empowerment happening to the last mile so really uh, congratulations to everybody sitting here and talking about what microsoft can do i actually covered most of the things which we are doing and from the technology aspect we are doing a lot of initiatives as industry partnerships lot of skilling initiatives with uh, teacher training sessions mous with the government so that there is skilling plus the empowerment of the uh, educators from the technology aspect microsoft is investing hugely you have been hearing a lot of news about how microsoft is uh, open ai is coming into the picture which is going to be transformational from an education perspective it is not only about uh, talking about new advancement in the technology but we are we are also working in the use case which will make it very much relevant in the education system just to give you an example uh we i was talking about the teams and how the localized uh, language is very much important the another aspect another side of the story is uh whenever for any we uh, there is a teams meeting which is going on people take notes and there are very important topics or points which are being covered if there is a way that these points can be captured automatically and you don't have to memorize or somebody is noting them down separately there is a automatic way of doing it so it will make many of the manual aspect covered and you don't have to invest manually into all these things so these this is called the teams uh, premium aspect which is happening as we speak so there is a lot of advancement from microsoft there is a lot of investments from the uh, skilling aspects and we are looking forward to work with everybody here and making that change and bringing uh, whatever the muscle arm of technology from microsoft to the education system thank you swati uh, i have i have been told that uh, mr raghuram ayer has to catch a flight so uh, uh, how much time are we having mr raghuram uh, pardon is there any scope for uh, staying till well so before you leave uh, a closing comment from your side we'll continue with the rest of the panel discussion yeah closing comment on this topic and what all things uh, your initiatives your department is taking to bridge this digital divide I a particular I question uh, which is there with me given to me is uh, odisha government has planned to introduce a gender equality program in over 20000 government schools your thoughts on the role of technology in implementing this program Uh, i would like to just say that besides the infrastructure part which i already told a lot of teacher training programs are also underway especially now that summer vacation is on so we are having a lot of teacher uh, training programs 
both for the teacher educators as well as for the teachers both primary teachers secondary teachers all the teachers in the department we are we are having a lot of training programs where ict capacity building on ict is also an integral part of the of these um, training programs so whatever is available right now in the schools they have to be optimally used whatever infrastructure has been created with so much difficulty these this this infrastructure has to be put to the optimal use that is what is the stress now so the teachers are being uh, guided on how to how to make use of this technological systems which have been put in place in the schools this is one part as far as uh, you are talking about the gender gender inequality is not much in odisha in fact today's matriculation results were out and as always girls have surpassed boys it has been happening for the last few years both in the matriculation 10th board exam as well as in the 12th board exams always girls are doing much better than boys both in terms of numbers as well as in terms of the qualitative performance in both in both the system, in both the the statistical data we find that there is a, a marked difference between girls and boys so there is not much gender inequality but wherever uh, in very remote areas as he said that the last one we always try to put it front so wherever those things are there they are being taken care of so we don't have much gender inequality in the education system great uh, thank you quite, quite heartening to know that uh, there is not much of gender inequality as far as odisha is concerned and as far as the results he just mentioned i think that is a broader national trend also these days that girls are actually surpassing boys in i will just add one more thing many are from the education uh, sector but working in different areas uh, you were you were mentioning in the initial remarks about out of school children so that is also a cause of concern out of school children or children who are not able to complete their education that is also a cause of concern but recently now we have taken up a program where these out of school children were identified across all districts and from just this week in kalahandi we have where we found the maximum number of out of school children in fact in today's board uh, results also Kal kalahandi is one of the district which has not performed very well so in kalahandi we have brought all the out of school children to one place we are counseling them and then we those who are interested to study we are putting them in the open school and those who want to go into the skill sector in which sirs department is we are trying to counsel them and put it put them in some skill uh, skill sector where they can become employment ready so this is one thing also which we have taken up for the students okay great so scaling for these out of uh, school students is concerned let me bring in here gangadhar sahu ji uh, what particular initiatives or activities are being undertaken by your department to train these out of school students children and your thoughts on integration of new age technologies like cloud and ai with traditional teaching methods to create a more effective and comprehensive learning experience so uh, i was talking about the out of school students uh, yeah. mr gangadhar and uh, initiatives being undertaken by your departments to train them uh, yes first actually as raghuram was telling this has been a cause of concern for the government and the society since the dpp period dpp then sarva shikshya now it is samagra shikshya so uh, government is uh, taking so many measures to in school them but with regard to the skill development and technical education department we have also certain initiatives and incentives for out of school children that means those who have 
grown up, maybe up to the age of 14 and above, we are attracting them for skilling them. Across the state, we have uh, around 80 skill development centers where we are attracting the out of skilled children to come for a short term course to make them employable, to make them skilled. Many people might be wondering it's a kind of BTEC or MTEC. No, not like that. It's like welding, repairing, college teaching, so many things. Those, I mean, cycle mechanic, AC mechanic, electrician, these things are also the skill sectors. So once these out of school children come to our school development centers, and acquire some sort of skills during the short term course of two months to four months, then they become employable in the society and they earn their livelihood. That is what is going on now. And I think it is also appropriate to share one message of our department with you people because when I was not in the department, I was also ignorant that for the girl children, technical education or admission in the IIT, ITIs and polytechnics is totally free. And this is covered under our Dakhyata scheme. The Sudakhya, the name has been uh, christened as Sudakhya. That means we want to give Dakshata to the girls' children. So, 100% free of cost technical education to the girls' children. So, the society should know and send the girls' children to the technical education institutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gangadhar Sahu. Uh, uh, next quick question for R.K. Das uh, in NIC. Mr. Das is an uh, expert in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, in your opinion, Mr. Das, how can emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, can, they can be leveraged to improve the quality of education, plus also give access to education and help bridge the digital divide? We are adopting AI, blockchain, and uh, the emerging technologies in education. Uh, we have implemented a online examination system called PBOX during COVID period with a proctoring base using AI as a proctoring tool in face recognition, whispering recognition and uh, mobility recognition, the robotic Bots were injected to the remote machines, which take control of the machine to uh, create a controlled environment and uh, use the examination most secure. We have conducted those for the internal examination of our own organization and also for scholarship examination of the state of Meghalaya. The same is now in the process of implementing in, in the organization like uh, NILIT and uh, NAT in a national wide project. It's in a proposal state. We have uh, used blockchain in uh, plus two certificate of CBAC uh, in the states of Karnataka, where the digital fingerprint of the Documents are pushed into the blockchain for uh, verification of the authentication at a later stage. We are in the process of suggesting the organization 
create a portals for the students where they can put their questions which can be answered by their peer maybe mentors maybe other subject experts at any time so that the questions of the students anywhere in in the, in the state could be answered by any peer so no one to one system is required anybody can answer so people will get the uh, solutions easily and there could be a chance of bridging the uh, digital divide well the uh, accessibility is not there due to different constraints we say we are there service to create offline contents is the best solution offline contents could be put in the areas where there is a problem of internet and other things are there the offline content management systems are there with our organization and also we have the digital library system available free of cost to all the schools and colleges which is already under implementation in many part of the state if ai can be more utilized per grading system also uh, which can reduce the time of the uh, teacher uh, quality time of the teacher which he can uh, give it to the students um, for uh, better guidance the um, technologies we are having are many but to bridge the digital divide mainly infrastructure and resources should be provided by the concerned departments at the grassroots level where technology can be implemented easily thank you mr das a last question for mr tapas nayak what role tapas is diet khoda playing in training teachers to effectively integrate technology into their teaching practices a uh, quick answer of 2 minutes because i am only left with 2 minutes now uh, actually khurda district uh, is uh, a district with uh, more than uh, 1200 schools and more than 5000 elementary teachers 132 crccs and it is a very challenging uh, task uh, for the diet to capacitate all the teachers of the district particularly the elementary uh, school teachers so um, uh, only technology is the only uh, option to reach all the teachers of the district face to face training is not possible at all the times because i uh, the teacher capacity building i don't believe that face to face training is the only solution face to face tra tra teacher training program is required but then reaching to the teacher and solving their day to day problem providing support to solve the, their problems is the major challenge before uh, before before all the teacher education institutions before the state also uh, what is the major problematic area throughout india though some states are doing very well in the respect after the face to face training they are uh, reaching to each and every teacher to develop their capacities and capacity development means that face to face training followed with frequent on site support to the teachers frequent discussions dialogues with the teachers then the capacity of the teachers can be developed and they can use uh, at their school uh, classroom level so what we uh, uh, we are doing and our thrust is to reach each and every teacher of the district so that's why we have cluster level resource groups teacher groups for an example just i am giving a uh, example two to three months back uh, uh, government of india has gave a report to the state uh to particularly to osepa that the teachers of khurda district and puri district they are not aware about some some facts particularly the um, uh, foundational literacy and numeracy nipun bharat things so immediately uh, when uh, really that was a very challenging uh, situation before us and immediately uh, we reach each and every teacher of the khurda district nearly 5000 teachers elementary school teachers and i warned them about the uh, fln mission fln program fln lakshyas fln methodologies and everything and nowadays when i am visiting the teacher training programs and meeting the teachers i uh, uh, nearly 8 nearly 80% of the teachers they can aware about the things and this is only that that is only possible because of the technology because during the month of february 
from diet we conducted nearly more than 200 online meetings with the teachers for their capacity building and to make aware about the facts second thing um, what we are doing uh, we are running a sort of micro learning packages with the help of the dikha team government of india dikha team and that program is the foundational on foundational numeracy nearly 12 uh, 1, 1200 teachers of the kurda district who are teaching at the grade 1 and grade 2 level and the crcs is there enrolled in the program and they are undergoing the online um, online course so similarly we are uh, what we are doing we are doing the, the video resources particularly uh, on best quality of tlm best quality of tlm because there are many teachers in kurda district they are doing excellent tlms Excellent TLM, uh, a person who cannot see, they, uh, they cannot believe. And uh, what we are doing, we are making the video recording of the, all the TLMs, teaching learning materials, and making it available to all the teachers of the district, and we are going in that step. Second thing now, particularly after the NEP, uh, we have started a project, particularly on the puppet-based pedagogy. We have identified very good teachers in Korda district, and we make the video recording of their classes, and uh, the, the, those video resources, through the online teacher training program and uh, through different um, uh, media, we, we, are, we are trying to uh, send to all the teachers of the Kurda district so they can go through the video resources, they can go through the good practices by other teachers and they will be inspired through that and they can use in their classes. So, uh, like similarly, we are doing online monitoring, we are reaching to each and every teacher through online uh, meetings, online dialogues. Uh, with the teachers and this is only that's why I am telling the technology is the only alternative uh, to reach the last people of the country the last teacher the last child great great inputs and great insights uh, we are through this uh, panel discussion but before I actually uh, conclude this session a quick one or two lines round up by each of the speakers here starting from Swati uh, well, thank you so much for this. Uh, the only thing which I want to say is we are, because we are talking about diversity, uh, we would want to see more diversity sitting here. Thank you. So, it, uh, our top leadership uh, further wants uh, OKCL to go into uh, other diversified field uh, like green jobs into circular economy so we are trying to implement technology into those sectors very shortly thank you thank you elites for organizing such a uh, uh, educative program uh, which can bridge the uh, that is digital gap and it is not much helpful for the different stakeholders uh, to get benefit out of it. Thank you very much. Good, very good. Actually, we are very much thankful to uh, three of you for providing us this platform. And uh, as I saw from your presentation, there are many takeaways for us. And uh, going back, I'll uh, discuss with uh, my colleagues how we can best utilize the solutions that you have on your platter. Thank you very much. We are ready with technology, ready with resources. We invite all the departments to come up, to take the advantage and reach the people. So, the, actually there are many resources are available in, the, uh, in, in our state also in, at different levels. But how to integrate those resources um, logically? systematically and scientifically to the teaching learning process is very important and the capacity of the teachers uh, should be built on that. Well, uh, this has been a truly a very nice panel discussion indeed. Uh, we, we touched upon very relevant topic of uh, bridging the digital divide. And in today's context, uh, this is one of the biggest ironies that despite on one hand the country is progressing and we are talking of a 21st century transfer transformational superpower which India is on the cusp of being in. There remains this grim reality of uh, lacks of students without access to the basic tools of uh, technologies and uh, basic access to the digital infrastructure as well. But yes, uh, green shoots are already already emerging as mentioned by Raghurama here that 100% of the schools have been covered under 
the intra, intra, internet connectivity in the in the state. And uh, similarly, sports as success stories uh, have been there in the rest of the states also. We discussed a lot of insightful ideas, right, from uh, e-contents to e-modules to mobile application modules, as mentioned by Dr. Manuranjan Patel. It was truly insightful. Uh, we do look look forward to more such insightful discussions in times to come. Thank you, all the panelists here.